Hello friends, welcome back to Cosmopolitan Cornbread. So this video is going to be a little bit different. It is part of a collaboration by my friend Anna over at Fermented Homestead. This collaboration is called Fermented February. And every day throughout the month of February, there will be a fermentation video by one of the collaborators. And every Monday at 7.30, Central Time. Anna will have a live stream on her channel where she will be doing giveaways with a finale on the 29th. So for my contribution to the collaboration, I decided to show exactly how to restart a dry sourdough starter. Very often people will get starters in the mail from friends, from businesses or Etsy shops but then they don't necessarily know how to successfully restart that dry sourdough starter. And I will tell you that I tried to do it for years and I never could figure out what I was doing wrong. But now, as you can see, I have figured it out. And so now I can start sourdough. I can keep it alive and I can have sourdough starter for all the recipes that I want to make so that I can make the sourdough things like these sourdough biscuits. So here is how I successfully got my dry sourdough starter going again. You're going to need a little bit of dechlorinated warm water, a small container. I'm just using a little jar here and your dry starter. So first I'm gonna take a tablespoon of the dry starter and I'm gonna put it in my little container. You can use a jar like this or you could use a small dish with a Ziploc bag, but you are going to wanna to be able to cover this to keep it from drying out. So again, one tablespoon of the starter and now I'm going to add two tablespoons of lukewarm water. And we're just going to stir these together and then I'm going to cover the jar and I'm gonna let this sit here on the counter for a couple of hours just to rehydrate the sourdough starter. If you're new here, eight years ago, my husband and I planted roots and began our homestead in Alabama after 25 years of active duty army life. We started with a house and a piece of land and we built gardens, animal structures, all the homestead things. We thought we were gonna live there forever. Until last year when the Lord called us to the mountains of Arkansas and here we are starting all over again. Here on my channel you'll see all about baking and cooking, preserving and canning. You'll see us rebuilding a homestead here in the mountains and faith. So now that the sourdough dry starter has been rehydrated, we're gonna go ahead and feed it with a tablespoon of flour. And it's best to do this with your general run-of-the-mill, all-purpose or bread flour. You can transition your starter over to whole grains later on, but I find that it works best if you just start it with this. Stir it all together. And as you can see, everything is kind of thick and a little gooey looking, but that is exactly what we're going for. So then I'm just going to take the lid of my jar, set it on top. No need for a ring at this point. Day two. Now, as you can see, there's already some bubbles down in here. If you don't see any bubbles in your starter, that's okay. No need to panic. It may take a couple of days. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna feed this with another tablespoon of flour and two teaspoons of water. Stir it all together. Then we'll cover it up and we'll let it sit for another day. All right, 
It's been another day. Let's take a peek in that jar and see what we see. All right, we're seeing more bubbles, lots of bubbling action. This is exactly what we want to see. It's beginning to get a little spongy in texture. But again, if you don't see anything quite yet, that's all right. Give it another day and just wait and see what happens. Now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this to a slightly bigger jar because we're going to feed it a little bit more than we have in the past. This time around, I'm going to add in a quarter of a cup of water and a third of a cup of flour. We're gonna mix this all together until everything is fully combined. Once I mix everything together, I like to take a spatula and scrape down the sides because that helps me see if my starter has been rising up. I also take a rubber band and I put it around the jar at the level of the sourdough so that I can see where the sourdough started and then where it gets to. And I cover it up with a lid. All right, the next day, now you can see there's been a lot of bubbling and you can see by the side of the jar where my sourdough rose to and then fell back down. Today is the day you should be seeing some action in your sourdough. Now how quickly or slowly your sourdough rises will depend on the temperature in the room. If it's in a warm location, it'll rise and fall faster. If it's cool, it's gonna take a lot longer. Today I'm going to once again add in a third of a cup of flour and a quarter of a cup of water. And I'm gonna mix these all together and I'll do the same thing I did the day before. Once everything is all combined, I will scrape down the sides of my jar, try and get all of the starter down into the bottom. That way I can see where it has risen to before it falls back down. You can see how nice and goopy this is. You don't want your starter to be too thin like a pancake batter because any bubbling will just go right up through there and not stay in there. But you also don't want it too thick like a cookie dough where the air bubbles can't really form and do anything. I adjust my rubber band to the new level. And as you can see, just a few hours later, we've got a lot of growth. And look at those bubbles. All right, day five. Today, I'm going to transfer all of my sourdough starter over to one of the jars that I more often than not keep my starter in. We're just gonna scrape all of that starter over there into the bigger jar because we're going to need a little more room for this starter. This time around, I'm gonna add in one cup of flour. Again, this is just unbleached, all-purpose flour. And I'm gonna add in two-thirds of a cup of water. From this point forward, this is generally the same amount that I add every day after I have taken out some discard. I'm gonna mix everything all together. I'm gonna scrape down the sides as best I can once again. We're gonna put the rubber band on to see where everything is. And we're gonna let it sit. An hour later, we can already see things happening. And a couple hours after that, even more. At this point, your sourdough starter will likely be doubling or more in volume every time you feed it. Look at that spongy texture in there from all those bubbles. From this point forward every day, I'll remove one cup of the sourdough starter, put it into a jar to keep in the refrigerator to use for all of the things that I make throughout the week. And then I'm going to replace that one cup of starter with one cup of the unbleached all-purpose flour and two thirds cup of water. And this is my daily maintenance for the sourdough starter. And as you can see, we now have a very active, very lively sourdough starter that we can use for all the things from sourdough breads 
to sourdough crackers. Or one of our favorites, sourdough pancakes. They are so fluffy and airy and just delicious. You can get these recipes on my website, cosmopolitancornbread.com, where you can find over 800 recipes and articles. Be sure to check out the list of participating channels in the video description down below, and you can find a link to the playlist where all of the videos will be added throughout the month. Thanks for joining me here at the Mountain Homestead. I will talk to y'all next time.